ام تحسب ان اكثرهم يسمعون او يعقلون اور ڈو یو تھنک دیٹ موسٹ اف دیم ہیئر اور ریزن ان ہم الا کل انعام نو دے ڈونٹ ریزن دے آر ناٹ ایکسپٹ لائک لائف اسٹاک بل ہم ابل سبیلا رادر دے آر ایون مور اسٹرے ان دیئر وے ڈو یو تھنک دیٹ دیز کلیئر ورسز دا ورڈز اف دا پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دے انڈرسٹینڈ دیم دے ہیئر دیم دے انڈرسٹینڈ دیم نو Many times it happens that we listen, we study, but then what happens? Our actions don't change. We hear, we learn, we sit in a gathering, and then what happens? When we get up, we were exactly the way we were before. We continue to do what we were doing previously. So when the actions do not change, when the actions do not transform, then what does it mean? We didn't really understand. Even if we have the information, we didn't truly comprehend it. And if we didn't comprehend it, then how are we different from these animals that Allah has mentioned over here? Have you not considered your Lord, how He extends the shadow, and if He willed, He could have made it stationary? Then we made the sun for it an indication. Meaning because of the sun, how it moves through the day, because of the rotation of the earth, the position of the sun changes, what happens? The shadows also, they move. They increase, they shorten, they move, their direction changes. All of this happens how? With the sun. ثُمَّ قَبَضْنَاهُ إِلَيْنَا قَبْضًا يَسِيرًا Then we hold it in hand for a brief grasp. It's amazing. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides light to us is so, so beautiful. If you think about it, the sun could have been just like these lights that we have. In the morning, switch on, and in the evening, switch off. Just imagine how much our eyes would hurt. Hmm? Has it ever happened that you go in a basement and after some time your eyes hurt? Why do they hurt? Because the light is consistently the same. It is the same. And it's like, it's in your face. But when you're outside, then what happens? The light, it changes. In the morning, it's a different color. In the afternoon, it's a different color. In the evening, as the sun is setting, it's a different color. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He hasn't just made this perfect system, but He has also made it so beautiful that we find comfort in it. You see these lights, yes, they're providing us light. But how many times you get headaches because of lights? You get headaches. But subhanAllah, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the sun, how the light increases and decreases, how the shadows change through the day. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fulfilled our needs and He has also provided comfort for us. This is a sign. وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعْلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلِ And He is the one who has made the night for you. لِبَاسًا As a clothing. وَالنَّوْمَ سُبَاتًا And He has made sleep a means for rest. وَجَعْلَ النَّهَارَ نُشُورًا And He has made the day a resurrection. Meaning the day is a time when you get up. Get up from where? From your state of sleeping. Sleep is like death. So in the daytime, should we be sleeping a lot? Hmm? Should we be sleeping a lot? No. Yes, okay, a little nap here and there is fine. But the whole day spent sleeping, that's not okay. And it is He who sends the winds as good tidings before His mercy. And we sent down from the sky pure water that we may bring to life thereby a dead land and give it as drink to those we created of numerous livestock and men. And we have certainly distributed it among them that they might be reminded. But most of the people refuse except disbelief. Allah has placed signs everywhere for us, sky, earth, around us, in us. Why? So that we learn a lesson. But most people live this life with closed eyes. They don't even notice or reflect on these signs that Allah has placed for us. And if we had willed, we could have sent into every city a warner. Meaning in every city, every block, a prophet could have been sent. A warner could have been sent. But Allah has not done that. فَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ So do not obey the disbelievers. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا And strive against them with the Qur'an, a great striving. Meaning now prophets are not coming. Muhammad ﷺ was the last messenger and in his time he was the only messenger. Allah could have sent thousands and thousands of messengers at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and after him. But he didn't do that. So, how are the people going to find out? Through the Qur'an. Who's going to convey it to them? Who's going to convey it to them? Those who have the Qur'an. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا kabira. Strive against them with the Qur'an. A great striving. Against who? Against the enemy. 
Notice the word jihad over here. Allah is telling us to do jihad. Jihad with the Qur'an. How do you do jihad? Jihad is extreme effort. Extreme effort. That a person spares no moment or effort in his striving. And secondly, he does it at a large scale. Not a small effort, but a great effort. In which a person uses all his abilities, all his resources. This is jihad. And thirdly, that he strives at every front, meaning wherever he is needed, he goes forward. This is true striving. Allah is telling us to strive with the Qur'an. How? In receiving it. That when you receive it, exert every possible effort. Exert every possible effort. Strive properly. And do your best Not just an ordinary effort, a small effort, but a great effort in which you're using all of your abilities, all of your resources. And then on receiving it, also spreading it, passing it on to every corner, every part of the world. And use every way, every means to make this Qur'an reach every human being on this planet. Because Qur'an is for everybody, not just for us. And for this, we have to exert tireless effort. We don't just try once, but twice, three times, more, even more, if necessary. If a person doesn't listen one way, use a different methodology, use a different technique. Why? The goal is people should have Qur'an. This is what the Prophet ﷺ was told to do. And this is what he did. He truly strove with the Qur'an, a great striving. He did not rest. And it's amazing that within 23 years, what happened? What happened to Arabia? It was changed. It was completely transformed. The Prophet ﷺ truly, he did jihad with the Qur'an and he did it really well. You see the way people market their products? How do they do it? Hmm? How do they do it? Is it just one flyer? Is it? No. There's a flyer and then there's a TV infomercial. And you're waiting for that infomercial to please stop already. Right? And it doesn't just come once but many times. Then you get things in the mail. I mean, it's amazing how a newspaper full of flyers, you know, it's thrown at your door, you don't even open it, you put it straight in the recycling, at least that's what I do. And then what happens? Before you know it, there's another pile of these flyers outside, and these people don't give up. I always wonder when the guy comes to deliver this mail, doesn't he see that the previous one is still sitting outside? Why is he delivering it? Because if he doesn't, he won't get paid. Right? Right? And even though people know that most of the flyers end up in garbage, still, still, they put in so much effort. Rain, snow, cold, hail, no matter what is going on, you see people delivering mail, promoting businesses. Have you ever come across people for like the hundredth time in the grocery store asking you if you'd like a particular card? And you tell them, no, thank you. And then each time you go to the grocery store, they ask you again and again and again. This is what they're promoting their business. So we have made a deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. In Allah ashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahumul jannah. If we want to make it a jannah, we have to pay the price. It's a two way street. Allah has purchased our lives and our wealth. Why? So that we can have Jannah in the next life. Now this deal that we've made with Allah, what does that demand from us? وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا You promote this Qur'an through a beautiful way, every possible method, whoever you can find. This was the hukum for the Prophet ﷺ. He did it, and he did it really well. But what is the ummah doing? What are we doing? What am I doing? Is this really a priority for us that this Qur'an that I benefit from, other people also benefit from it? I mean seriously, wouldn't it be the height of selfishness? That we read the Qur'an, we enjoy it, we hear it, we understand its meanings, and there are people who are desperate to learn and nobody's willing to help them? This is dhulm. What do you think? Allah is not going to ask? Don't we learn about that hadith that Allah will say to a person on the day of judgment, I was sick and you didn't come visit me. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. And the servant will be surprised that, Ya Allah, you, how could you be sick? How could you be hungry? And Allah will say, my servant was sick. If you had gone to him, you would have found me. My servant was hungry. If you had fed him, you would have found me. And this is something that we really need to take seriously. There are people, we think people are not interested in the Qur'an. People want to learn the Qur'an. 
they are desperate to learn the book of Allah. But it is sad that we have received it, but we just sit with it. And day by day we are only forgetting it. We are forgetting it. How are we going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We really need to be honest with ourselves that what practical effort am I exerting? What am I doing to convey this Qur'an? And this is not supposed to be an ordinary struggle. Why did you think it was meant to be easy? It wasn't meant to be easy. Allah says jihad. And jihad means you put in all your resources. You die in this cause. And sometimes it happens that you go home and you feel like you're dead. You don't have any strength left in you. But it wasn't supposed to be easy anyway. Who said it was easy? When you go to work to make a good amount of paycheck, it's not easy. You come home exhausted. Don't you see your husband? When he comes home, how is he? Doesn't he say he's tired? Nobody disturbed me? He says that, right? Because making money is not easy. Making Jannah is not easy either. So we all need to check, what is my effort? What is my share in this? What am I doing to convey the Qur'an? And it is He who has released simultaneously the two seas, one fresh and sweet and one salty and bitter. And He placed between them a barrier and a prohibiting partition. The huge sea water, imagine sea, how huge it is, right? When you stand in front of an ocean, it's massive. But Allah says that in the sea there are springs or there are rivers that are merging into it, that are coming into it. And these rivers or these springs, they have sweet water. They are of sweet water. And the sweet water and the salty water, they don't mix. You know that? They don't blend, they don't merge. And there's no visible barrier between them. You know like when you put water and oil in a container, then what happens? The oil, it just comes to the surface, it rises to the surface. Why? What is it that's separating them? Is there like a barrier over there? Like a plastic seal or something? No, it isn't. Both are liquids. But what happens? They keep away from each other. What a beautiful example over here is given of the fact that sometimes a person is surrounded by a very toxic, negative environment just like seawater. You know like seawater? Can you drink even a sip of it? No way. You cannot. And just like that, a person is surrounded by a bitter, negative environment. But he survives in the midst of it like sweet water. He stays sweet. He stays sweet. What happens to us? We become bitter when others are bitter with us. Over here, what is being mentioned? That water, it can remain sweet even if it is in the middle of salty water. So we need to see, am I salty or am I sweet? What am I like? People around me, how do they find me? Salty or sweet? Because every person has a taste, right? Meaning when you deal with them, when you talk to them, when you spend time with them, what am I like? And also we need to see that what happens to me when I go to a different environment? Do I retain my identity? Do I remain myself? Do I hold on to my moral standard of patience, of tolerance, of a happy disposition? Or do I slip? Do I hold on to the book of Allah? Do I adhere to the commands of Allah? Or do I just become like the people who are around me? Whether they are at home, at school, or work, outside in the mall, wherever I may be. Can I maintain my sweetness despite the bitterness around me? This is the real question. And it is he who has created from water a human being and made him a relative by lineage and marriage. And ever is your Lord competent concerning creation. But they worship other than Allah, that which does not benefit them or harm them. And the disbeliever is ever against his Lord and assistant to shaitan. So we should also support each other in the work of Allah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا And we have not sent you a prophet except as a bringer of good news and as a warner. Say, I do not ask of you for it any payment, only that whoever wills might take to his Lord away. This is the compensation, the wage of the prophet. What is that? Not money. What is it? That people are connected to their Lord. They get to know Allah. They get to know the word of Allah. And this should be the compensation that we should be aiming towards. That when I tell somebody something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I tell them something about the Qur'an, I don't expect anything from them. 
that they should become my best friends and then they should forever owe it to me and then that they should forever be good to me. No. Or that they should pay me, they should give me good gifts, big gifts because I am helping them. No. Our goal is what? That when a person whom you're trying to convey the Qur'an to, he receives the Qur'an, you've received your compensation. You have gotten your paycheck. Why? Because once a person is guided through you, then you know what Allah has in store for you? The likes of which do not exist in this world anywhere. Nowhere at all. Because when a person is guided through you, that is the best, the best reward that you can get. So the prophets of Allah, they made it clear, we don't expect anything in return for you. All we want is, إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ إِلَى رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا You take away to your Lord. If you take away to your Lord, you start going towards Allah, you are on sirat mustaqim, I have won. I have been compensated. And this is the compensation that we should be aiming for. Aim high. And rely upon the ever-living who does not die and exalt with his praise. And sufficient is he to be with the sins of his servants acquainted. He who created the heavens and the earth and what is between them in six days. And then he established himself above the throne, the most merciful. So ask about him, one who is well informed. And when it is said to them, prostrate to the most merciful, they say, and what is the most merciful? Should we prostrate to that which you order us? And it increases them in aversion. Blessed is he who has placed in the sky great stars and placed therein a burning lamp and luminous moon. So make an effort to see the sun, the moon. Now inshallah the moon is quite clear. So make an effort to see it. Because Allah has placed these things in the sky. وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً And it is He who has made the night and the day in succession. Meaning one goes and the other comes in its place. For what purpose? لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا For whoever desires to remember or desires gratitude. If you want to continue to remember Allah, if you want to feel grateful to Allah, then what do you have to do? You have to look at what Allah has created. The signs that Allah has placed in the sky, around us. The blessings that He has given us. وَعِبَادُ Rahman And the servants of the most merciful. Who are they? Who are Allah's true servants? الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Are those who walk upon the earth easily. Not lazily, like a sick person. No, humbly, gently, with honor and dignity. يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ Salama. And when the ignorant address them harshly, they say words of peace. Meaning they don't fight and argue everywhere. That everywhere they're ready to roll up their sleeves and get into a fight. No. When there is a healthy discussion for the purpose of learning, understanding, yes, they carry it on, they participate in that. But the moment it turns into a pointless discussion, delving into matters that are irrelevant, or mere criticism of the deen, then what do they say? They just say salam, and they move on to something better, and something that's more productive. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And those who, spend, those who spend the night, part of the night, to their Lord, prostrating and standing in prayer. Alhamdulillah, Allah has forced us this month of Ramadan to do that. Hmm? Alhamdulillah, thank Allah for that. Thank Allah for the ability to pray even if it's a little. For the ability to pray in the night. Spending that time in prostration, in standing, and ask Allah to give you tawfiq to do more. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا And those who say, Our Lord, رَبَّنَا صْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ Our Lord, avert from us the punishment of hell. إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا Indeed, its punishment is ever adhering. You see fire. When something catches fire, does that fire go away quickly? No. A person in hellfire also. Inna adabaha kana gharama. It is ever adhering. Indeed, it is evil as a settlement and as a residence. Meaning, temporarily or permanently, hell is not where we want to be, O oh Allah. And they are those who, when they spend, do not do so excessively or sparingly, but are ever between that justly moderate. They're balanced when it comes to spending. 
And those who do not invoke with Allah another deity or kill the soul which Allah has forbidden to be killed except by right and do not commit unlawful sexual intercourse. And whoever should do that, what? Shirk, qatl or zina will meet a penalty. He will meet a penalty because these are serious sins. يُضَعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Multiplied for him as a punishment on the day of resurrection. Meaning the punishment will only be ever increasing and growing. One punishment after the other. And he will abide therein humiliated. Except for those who repent. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابْ وَآمَنَا And he believed. وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And he also did righteous work. Then for them, Allah will replace their evil deeds with good ones. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. So if somebody has made any of these mistakes that are mentioned here, then what is it that he should do? He should repent, believe, and do righteous deeds. Okay, repentance, that's understandable. What does he mean by believing? Meaning he should renew his faith. Why? Because iman leaves when a person indulges in these actions. The Prophet ﷺ said that the believer doesn't remain a believer when he's committing zina, right? Iman leaves. Because haya and iman are together. When haya will go, and zina is the height of immodesty, qatl is also the height of immodesty, then what will happen? Iman will also go. In a hadith we learn that once a person asked the Prophet ﷺ that by accident I swore by Lat and Uzza. Lat and Uzza were idols. I mean, we should only swear by Allah, Wallahi. But this man, this companion, he made a mistake. Perhaps this was something that he was used to from before, accepting Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Say that. And spit three times to your left. Seek refuge with Allah from shaitan. And do not do that again. So you see, even if by accident shirk happens, a person commits shirk, or qatl, zina, these sins, I mean, people are people, they're human beings. Nobody is perfect. But if a sin happens, what do we learn? إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَا آمَنَا Renew your faith, refresh your faith. And وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Increase in righteous deeds now. Replace those sins with good ones. And the fact is that when a person turns to Allah repeatedly, making tawbah, crying over his sins again and again, not only do his sins get washed off, but with his increased servitude, he is also earning good deeds. So Allah will replace the sins with good deeds. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he who repents and does righteousness does indeed turn to Allah with accepted repentance. And for this they are rewarded immensely. A person once came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you think of a man who did every single sin and did not leave any sin whatsoever and he did not leave any desire, big or small, except that he fulfilled it? He did it. Everything. He wanted to do it, he did it. He didn't care about anything. He just cared about his desire. The Prophet ﷺ asked him, Did you accept Islam? Notice he said, Did you? Because <laughs> the man is talking about himself. He said, As for me, I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship besides Allah. He is one and has no partners and you are the messenger of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Do good deeds and leave sins. And Allah will turn all your sins into good deeds. Allah will turn all your sins into good deeds. And the man, he was so amazed. He said, Ya Rasulullah, even my betrayals and my immorality, like my indecent actions, the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, if you leave them, and you replace that time with good deeds, Allah will convert the sins into good deeds. The man said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he left, saying, Allahu Akbar. And this tawbah, when it is sincere, then, yes, Allah will turn the sins into good deeds. We learned the Prophet ﷺ said, some people will wish on the day of judgment that they had committed more sins. They had committed more sins. It was said, why? O Messenger of Allah. He said, الَّذِينَ بَدَّلَ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Those people whose sins will be converted into good deeds because of their repentance, they will wish they had done more sins. It doesn't mean that we should strive to commit sins. No. This is for who? The person who does sincere tawbah and on the day of judgment, Allah with His mercy accepts His tawbah and He will turn His sins into good deeds. 
Ibadur Rahman, Allah's special servants, what else do they do? And they are those who do not testify to falsehood. Meaning they don't give false testimony. They don't even look at what is wrong. Falsehood does not attract them. Even if it's for the purpose of entertainment. They don't like lies. They don't find false things funny. They don't find lies to be humorous. And when they pass near ill speech, useless vain stuff, they pass by with dignity. Meaning they don't participate in love. They move on when they see others doing it. Just like if you see somebody going through garbage, will you also say, okay, let me also look for some treasures in there? No way. Never. Love is like garbage. So when somebody's indulged in it, then the Ibadul Rahman, they just pass by with dignity and they go do something that is better. And those who, when reminded of the verses of their Lord, do not fall upon them deaf and blind. No, they look, they listen attentively and they take benefit. And those who say, رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Our Lord grant us from our wives, our spouses, and our children comfort to our eyes. Make them the comfort of our eyes. Because the fact is that if a person is trying to do good something themselves, and their spouse is not in it with them, then life becomes very difficult. It's a constant struggle. It's a war, it's a battle that a person is facing every day of their life. So they pray. They say, Oh Allah, You grant us calmness, comfort, coolness through our spouses. That they do good and we become so happy because of them. We are proud of them. وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا And our children also. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama And make us an example for the righteous. Meaning keep us ahead in good. Make us leaders of the righteous. Umar radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, that Ya Rasulullah, what kind of wealth should we keep? Because Allah, you know, He has set that gold and silver in Surah Ali Imran, زُهِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ Right? So at the end, there's something better that Allah has, right? So he said that, okay, then what is it that we should strive to have? The Prophet ﷺ said, one should take a grateful heart. Grateful heart is a treasure. قَلْبًا شَاكِرًا وَلِسَانًا ذَاكِرًا A remembering tongue. And a good wife who helps him in the matter of the akhirah. You see, sometimes we think, oh, men are supposed to do it. They're the qawam. Right, my husband? He should do all of this. He's the qawam. Religious responsibility is also on him. But what do we learn over here? That even a wife should help the husband in the matters of the akhirah. أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا Those will be awarded the house, the chamber, for what they patiently endured. What is this ghurfa in Jannah? Why? For sabr. And they will be received therein with greetings and words of peace. Abiding eternally therein. Good is the settlement and residence. Say, what would my Lord care for you if not for your supplication? Your Lord has no need of you. You need your Lord. For you have denied, so your denial is going to be adherent. Meaning now the consequences of your denial are going to be real. You're going to see them. You're going to face them. أَمْ تَحْسَبُ أَنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ أَوْ يَعْقِلُونَ Or do you think that most of them hear or reason? إِنْ هُمْ إِلَّا